Hey everybody, I am lucky enough to be here in the garden of Chris Jurek today and the irises are blooming. Last year we were here uh, and if you might remember we took a tour when the lilies were blooming in the summer and now it's uh, late spring and the irises and the peonies and we've caught just the end of the iris season and uh, Chris is going to tell us a little bit about, uh, we'll start with the irises and uh, so you haven't been growing irises too terribly long, have you? No, I got into this when I went to a seminar given by Kelly Norris down at Des Moines Botanical Gardens. And Kelly got my excitement going, and you know, he, I took home, he gave me a gift, one iris. And uh, I still grow it, it's down on my lower property. But I got into irises because of Kelly. And now I have blossomed into many varieties because I like to have irises blooming for several months. So I start, you know, with those dwarf irises and I move on to the BBs, border bearded. Um, I love miniature tall irises, but right now I'm standing in front of my tall bearded because this is the end of the season and they are so much fun. I oh, love to mix the them with my all varieties, yeah. all colors, um, varieties, they're tall. Um, right now I have them mixed with some of my lilies because it's pretty soon my lilies are going to start. So I like to intermingle my irises with my lilies. I also have tree peonies intermingled with these variety of irises. So the tree peonies start first and so then the true. irises bloom? And then later the, the lilies will Correct. Will That's a great combo. I so think. I really, really love it. Yeah, it's, so I just um, can't get over the, the different uh, ruffling on the petals and the unusual color blends. Well, I like the color blends. I like, this is like going to a party. This is having a party. Um, <laughs> Tom Johnson, um, I, I order many from um, Tom or Paul Black or whatever from Oregon or Lots a lot, of lot of, yeah, so lots of places. I, I have a mix. I, I, I like to mix up my hybridizers so that I have a variety. Right. I like to see what various different hybridizers grow. I think that's right. really important to me. I also like to know wh from what country, whether it's Oklahoma or whether it's Oregon or Washington or wherever these are coming from, how they perform in the garden. Do you find a difference in how where the irises are bred and how they perform? Not really. Sometimes when they come from Oregon, maybe I like to have them sitting out a little bit before I just plunk them right into the ground so mm -hmm. that they kind of get um, adapted to Iowa. To the climate To a the climate better. a little okay. bit better. I and think so that that works. Do you order them? You, you get them in the fall? Is that right? So I get them summer? in the fall. Well, not exactly in the fall. I start getting them in July or okay. August. When they're and, but I order them pretty quick because I want to make sure as soon as their catalogs come out, <laughs> then I, I jump on the program. Make sure you um, get what you want. So I get what I want. Yeah. Um, and it, so what's the, what's the technique for planting an iris when you get it? So I plant it um, in the fall, and I really don't do too much. You know, I don't feed it any heavy fertilizer mm -hmm. or, or anything, but I just have to prepare it right. and, and put you plant it them in. And shallowly? And I do. Yeah. I do. Do they usually come as a, um, a rhizome? They come as one, one, one you get little, one oh. little rhizome. Right. And it depends on the size. You know, a tall beard is bigger than a little SDB. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. um, and I also buy from fundraisers. When, when the different yeah. clubs, you know, they all have different society, whether it's a SDB or a BB or whatever, and they have fundraisers, and I try to contribute to the fundraisers. Right. But I'm also into Siberian irises, you know. Oh, I've been yeah. into Siberian That's for true. for a very long time, and these are down here. Um, and, and so, the, and they're almost done now. They're so almost they're, done as yeah. well. But yeah. I like to grow those, especially among my peonies, to add some blue, purple. Well, now there's yellow. It's there's a, a mixed blend, but I like to add them to my my peonies, especially. It's a great contrast. But I, I grow right. I grow a lot of variety because I like to make arrangements, and then I'm mm -hmm. able to put together an interesting arrangement. So pretty. They're so striking. So um, so once you've planted them in the so you, you get them bare root as rhizomes. So I get them late summer. Bare root, but also remember, I have to divide these things. So when you, this purple one, for instance, it's pretty full right now, and I'm going to have to divide that. Yeah. Okay. So is that every three, four? So five, when it when it starts getting, see the the hole in the middle, kind of. I mean, I, I just feel that that needs to be divided. Mm -hmm. Plus, 
I, I belong to here, I, I'm in Iowa, and I belong to the Iowa Central Iris Growers. Okay. And so what we do is we exchange. So not only do I buy from other people, but I exchange within my own club. Mm -hmm. Also here in Iowa, we're in Region 21. And we always used to, this COVID's kind of messing things up a little bit, but we always have a spring meeting and a fall meeting. Mm -hmm. And when we have our fall meeting, again, we bring in our rhizomes, we set them on our table, and we have an exchange. And that's really, really important. Um, you know, I like to get the new things, and it's not, it's, it's they're pretty pricey. These new ones, you can't just, right. you know, but I also like to keep in some of the historicals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to me, um, it's a good way. And now for the first time, I have auctioned off some of my irises um, to the Iowa Arboretum mm -hmm. um, so that it's a fundraiser for them. Great. So, um, That's really neat. And then another thing is I give, give them away, of course. And so you were just talking about dividing them. When's the best time to do So I the divide them um, in July or August when or dormant. In, dormant. Mm -hmm. And I like to pick up the clump especially if I'm giving them away and then I uh, rinse them in water and if I give them away I put a little bit of Clorox in it uh -huh. so that I, I'm sure that I don't have any um, bugs or anything or an, any right. whatever. Right. And I, it's very important too when you start working with these things that your tools are clean. So you don't want to just use, I mean I have a, you want to use clean tools. When you're dividing and slicing. When you're dividing and, and, and pull. And you can actually just lift it, you can take a fork Mm -hmm. And you can just actually lift these out of the, mm -hmm. out, and then actually they just kind of spread okay. apart. Mm -hmm. So do you dig the whole like this big one that you think? Needs yeah, to no, I'm gonna I'm gonna dig of that all out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. That's a humongous clump. <laughs> That's a pretty big clump. <laughs> like, I love the orange beard. Oh, the orange are beard. Beards are really interesting. You know, they can be pink, um, blue. I have one over here. So I've been deadheading, so you can see that I've got some that need to be cleaned up a little bit. It's a lot more fun when they're clean, but these um, beards are more yellow, and they have more of a, a, a lavender-like underneath that And then you were just yellow. showing me horns. And then I really want to show you these appendages that are on some of these, and they are fantastic. Um, that one hasn't been deadheaded yet, but maybe if you look at that seat, now look at that. That's amazing. Look at that beard, like and then you've got that, li on. like little caterpillars, and these are all appendages, and I am finding that I am in love with these appendages. Is that they a are new so is that a new thing? In it is a new day? thing. We have a category now, um, space agers. I love space agers. Oh, and then cool. the more funkier the flower, it's it's really, <laughs> I call them funky. It's really fun. Yeah, it is really fun. So, um, so when they're blooming, you like to deadhead just to kind of... I like to the, tidy it up. Right. During bloom season, people mm -hmm. are here pretty much daily coming into the garden. Mm -hmm. Usually I just pop it right on off. But... Um, and so this is uh, this is how you can keep the focus on the. the yeah, I don't want them to yeah. look at the spent flower, yeah, and you pretty much have to keep up on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So for me, I like to come up here, kind of at the end of the day, mm -hmm. when I'm done, because even if I deadhead early in the morning, by, by the, the time the end of the day comes, yeah. there are some more that need to be deadheaded. That makes sense. Well. Um, so this is just the beginning of uh, the garden tour here. So let's take a little, uh, well, well, let's walk right. down and look at the peonies. All right. So we're leaving the iris garden and we're headed down toward where you have most of your peonies planted, right? right? But in between there, we have this beautiful hillside planted up with um, hostas. Now, this is where it all started for you, right? Right. So my first love, I became a member of the Russell Hare Hostas Society, mm -hmm. and so I started with hostas a mm, long time ago. And so I started putting these hostas in, mm -hmm. but I've mixed my hostas now, and I've added some tree peonies and hellebores. Oh, and yeah. Right, so the hellebores are here first before anything else, and then I've added some martagon lilies in here, which are totally coming into bloom now. Yeah. Um, and martagons take shade. Martagons take shade. It's unusual. But um, I, I, I really love it in March when all my hellebores, and then we get into the hostas, 
Oh, and yes. then even in the hostas, I've also added some tree peonies. And the tree, so tree peonies take part shade. And so they take part shade. Okay. I have um, a couple of tree peonies still in bloom on, uh -huh. on this row here. Right. Oh, yeah, there. And, and so they take part shade. They do. Um, and the herbaceous peonies that are, which are they still really like now. more sun. Herbaceous really like more really sun. Really need more sun. Yeah. Okay. Tree peonies Great. take a little bit more shade. Uh huh. So that's why I so put them here. So tree peonies are earlier blooming, and they're a good combination to put with hostas. Then absolutely. I didn't, I didn't know that they took that much shade. You told me earlier that you have an astonishing 1,200 plus peony plants in this garden. <laughs> and so peony season goes for seven or eight weeks? Seven or eight weeks. Um, I start my peony season with species. Species can grow, uh, take again more shade. It's a more ferny leaf rather than a heavier leaf. Mm -hmm. um, and then I kind of move into my tree peonies and then you go into your single peonies, um, and then um, semi-double, and we're in our late stage now. Well, actually, we're into Japanese style and late stage, which is the bombs, which is okay. the full double. And a full double is really loaded interior where oh. you can't see that central, you know, it's all closed. The center of the bloom, So we're right. standing right now, um, so this is a double. Just, they're just so intricate and beautiful. I, these markings on this one are just, they are. even as a and bud, it's What just I really like to do is to take this when they're in that marshmallow, when you grab the, like, like this. this okay, one. this. Mm -hmm. This is perfect. And when you bring it into the house and you put it in the vase, you strip off some of the leaves, you put it in that vase, and the next morning, the <laughs> it's just... It's just huge. So that's the time to, so pinch, beautiful. To, to pick it. Exactly. Okay. But I'm also picking them now and I am wrapping them up in a little newspaper and I put them in a Ziploc bag. I don't mm -hmm. seal that bag, but I put them in a, a bag and then I put them in the refrigerator because I want to save some of these. Well, I'm actually practicing. Uh -huh. Okay, for me, I'm practicing so that I can take them out of the refrigerator, have it open in water, and enter it into <laughs> a flower show. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense, later so in the summer. So you gotta practice. So does the newspaper need to be damp so, yeah, or so dry? No, I put it dry. You don't have okay. to have it damp. I just wrap it to keep it, right. you know, and then I put it in the... And so then when you pull it out of the refrigerator in July or So August, it'll look like nothing mm -hmm. it'll look like this thing's dead but you just take it you shake it a little bit put it in that old water mm -hmm. and there it comes and it blooms and it blooms so. and wow. um so i am practicing so that next oh. year well you'll be all set right for the american peony society is meeting in michigan um flower show and after that it goes up to minnesota and i want to know new york and then minnesota but i want to be Ready to enter. Because oh. it's really fun to be able to enter into the whole thing. I mean, it's, it's, it's fun to be a part of that excitement yeah. of putting that flower on that table and seeing who, <laughs> who, that sounds who really has exciting got the best specimen for that, that day amazing. At, that emo at that time that it's judged. Yeah. But then so, moving down. Well, okay, this is, so, so this is a serious one. Okay. You know, that's the, the, the big bread double. Mm -hmm. And then we move into more of the japanese -y, And the Japanese have got um, a center that you can see usually that inside. These are the stamens? These are all the stamens, and sometimes they're one color, and sometimes they're um, multiple colors. And um, These look like water lilies almost. They do look like water lilies, they're and so it's beautiful. really, okay, you can't see any of the pistils or anthers in this, but you see the stamens. So, and then yeah. um, Roy Clem of Song Sparrow, that's no longer in business, sad to say, and a lot of people are really sad about this, me included. Um, he kind of bred some funky ones um, with <laughs> multi-color, but they're kind of fun to add to uh, arrangement. Oh yeah, they're just so stripy and uh, unusual, and they're also really fringy all over. Um, they are. It's just kind of so again, this is a lactoflora. A lactoflora has okay. got these side buds. Okay, that's how you know. So we're in lactoflora season right now. We're not into the hybrids. Hybrids usually just have one big, big bud, one per stem. Per stem. But oh, this is lactoflora. I did not know that. So, okay. and again, here's a different style of a Japanese. 
going with, with on. The pom- are these called pom poms? No, they're, they're that's not quite a pom pom. Okay. But it is really frilly. Yeah, in the center. Beautiful. But now we judge a peony. I don't know what this variety is, but this variety in the garden, if you were a judge, okay, mm-hmm. I don't know what this brand is, but oh, carefree. It's a Japanese. It's another. Japanese, but you see what happened here? Mm-hmm. It flops. Now, was so, it rain or did it just no, do this? No, it could the be rain. The... It could be wind. But mm-hmm. it, if you wanted something pretty in your garden, and you did, you, this is one mm-hmm. you would not choose. You might choose it if you wanted to put it in an arrangement, ah, but you right, would not choose it for your garden because it flops. So you were talking a little bit about award winning award winning peonies, correct? Um, a little bit ago with me. And what, is that one of the characteristics, or are they just looking at blooms when we talk about award winners? From they're the ta- they're, it system. depends if you're on the show table or if you're in the garden. Oh, what you okay, want. right. So if I wanted a garden and I, you would not, you would not people complain about weak the stems. floppy, weak stems. Right. They used to breed them for long stems. They wanted them for long stems, mm-hmm. but it's changed now. Do you need to deadhead peonies? Um, when they turn really ugly yes okay. so, but now look at this this is beautiful right you know this is sort of what i call self-cleaning mm-hmm. and look at the little tips so what i also <laughs> want to tell you is especially among early peonies some look very identical to each other okay mm-hmm. and you can tell the difference between one variety and another variety by these tips really if some some are white and some are red. Oh, interesting. Very, and then if you really want to get technical, you start looking here, right here. See that? That's uh-huh. called discs, okay? At the base? At the base. Okay. Sometimes they're brown, sometimes they're white, but these are discs. So if you really want to dissect your peony, you got to get in here to see what you have to see if it really matches oh, the correct description because... They're all different. They're all different. Oh, that's so interesting. But isn't this pretty? It now, is pretty. you had an arrangement, and you put a couple of these in your arrangement. So striking. This is pretty. It is pretty. It's very so, pretty. So irises, not so pretty as the flowers fade. They need to be snapped off. They need headed. to be snapped off. But the peonies. Correct. It's just fine to leave them. If they self This is self-clean. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is pretty. They're not all like that. Oh, they don't all pretty. self-clean. Okay. So you were telling me about um, the tree peonies starting earlier and then going into doubles and um, Japanese, but here we are with intersectionals. Where do they fit into an intersectional? Where do they? They fit into start that? blooming around week five, I'd say. Okay. And I've been in bloom with intersectionals for a couple weeks now. Um, they're still hanging on. The weather's being cooperative. Right. What, um, is, what is an intersectional? So an intersectional is between a tree peony and a herbaceous. It's a cross? It's a cross. Okay. And what I love about an intersectional is that um, it's not all the blooms are not up at the top, mm-hmm. but they go into a circle around the plant. Oh, and so they, yeah. they kind of bloom all over. And right. so that is really exciting for me. And, this and one, the color is more the variable colors of a tree peony, really, than um, maybe the herbaceous. Because the herbaceous is the herbaceous peonies are pink, red, white. Yeah, most, and this mostly. has got more more variable colors into right. it. More yellows and and, I, and, I, and right now it seems like I have a lot of intersectionals that are yellow. Mm-hmm. And um, this is Bartzella. This is Bartzella. It's a gold medal again. It was bred by Roger Anderson and Roger. Um, he lives in or Minnesota, mm-hmm. um, and and I like it. It's a little higher bush, um, beautiful color, just a beautiful, beautiful. It um, is again, it's so nice. If you cut it and then you put it in a bowl, mm-hmm. um, it's just stunning. How long do peonies last after you cut them usually? Oh gosh, a day, two days? Oh no, up to sometimes a week. Oh, nice. It's just a, you know sometimes okay when I go to bed at night. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll put them into a cooler place oh, so that yeah. I can, um, so that they'll stay, um, so, so I can enjoy them for a longer period of time. <laughs> right. Why have them uh, fading no, while right. you're I sleeping? Don't wanna, but then they'll let you know when they're done because they'll stop dropping their petals. Right. Okay. But, Makes sense. Um, 
So here's another amazing color combination that's an intersectional. Uh, we have two different colors on the same plant. Um, yes, yeah, so this is uh, Barry Garcia. <laughs> and I know it. See, this is another intersectional, and this has got more of a varied color. So we have a, kind of a yellow here, and then we have more of a orange copperish here, and it's all on the same plant. It's really beautiful. And I this just love was, this color, these kind of corally, coppery. It is. So, so, you know, we have colors to fit any scheme <laughs> of, of whatever. True. You know, this, again, these would make really lovely um, settings on your table if you were having guests for dinner or whatever. Mm -hmm. This one was um, bred by Donald Smith, and um, he lives out east. Okay. So it's, so it's, it's, it's a different part of the country. Our intersectionals... Um, grafted or are they uh, grown from the roots? They're typically. not grafted like a tree peony. Right, okay, so they're, so they're grown, grown from the roots. Right, right. Like, like so, so, but peonies. only the tree peony is grafted. And when you order peonies, uh, mail order, you will get them same time as the irises, right, or later? The irises, irises will come first, so they're okay. not in competition. These actually like to wait until more September, October. Okay, and then should you plant July, them? July, August. And then is it time to plant them usually right away when you get them? Or do you need to put them into cold storage? No, no, no. Plant them right away. Okay. Um, it's, it's helpful if you know where you're going to go with them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then you want to have plenty of room because, you know, ideally you want four feet. Oh, my goodness. Don't be squishing these things. Right? It's really pretty when you let them totally yeah. go out. So you really want, ideally, four feet. Four feet. Okay. So, um, and when you mail order, um, how, how big would a rootstock look for a particular so it's a little. Plant? It's just a little rhizome. Even and there, the there'll peonies, be three eyes. It'll be okay. you want three eyes. So and you'll see those little eyes. And those are the little point like Those are those points. little points. Okay. And then you mm -hmm. prepare your soil mm -hmm. and you put it in. And here in Iowa, we do need to cover those tips okay. because we get those freezes. Mm -hmm. And so, but not too deep. You know, not 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 any less more than two inches at all. Okay. You know, an inch and a half is plenty. And in, so we're in zone five in Iowa. And we're in zone five. So in zone six and warmer, you would be then planting you, it so the eyes were right at the soil level? Correct. Okay. Or maybe a little little covering, Just but not slightly. much. Okay. So, um, yeah. And then, um, of course, up in Minnesota, up in Wisconsin, it gets really, really cold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Same so thing. So they can have a little bit more covering. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the irises... We divide those every three, four, five years, but that's not the case with peonies, right? So peonies, you don't have to divide. You know, they can stand here for 50 to 100 years. <laughs> and never need to divide. They never need to be divided. Right. But if and you wanted to divide it. If you wanted to divide it, mm -hmm. you lift the whole plant up again. You okay. lift that whole thing. Mm -hmm. And then again, it will break apart. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and the then roots are pretty pretty big oh and then system, you right? want to trim those roots you, you don't need a whole lot you don't need all that root okay you can trim those roots so you don't need all the long really no. skinny but stuff. when you divide it and especially if you're giving it away mm -hmm. make sure that whoever you're giving it to gets a good three healthy eyes that's really important okay. however they will grow with one eye mm -hmm. in fact some of them some of the saunders peonies for instance mm -hmm. they don't need any eyes you just take this is saunders now this is the rhizome. You can just take that rhizome, put it in the ground, and it will... Really? What's a Saunders peony? Well, and, and, and the other ones will do that, too. Saunders mm -hmm. is A.P. Saunders. He's kind of the grandfather of all peonies. Okay, so But he's I a do breeder, know that was he's a breeder, a breeder and, um, mm -hmm. from New York. Mm -hmm. And um, you can take that rhizome, put it in the ground, and it will. Because so I've, I've done it, and really it reliable. does happen. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Great. Well... Thanks so much for uh, showing us the intersectionals. Let's just go take a look at a few other right. things. This one's really fascinating because of the uh, dark stamens that match the petals. Absolutely. We're standing in front of hot chocolate, and um, hot chocolate is another uh, lactiflora. It's, it's a Japanese. And, it, and it's got a little bit of more complexity going on in the center here. You see that? Is it fragrant? Not like the one that we're standing next to. It has a light fragrance. But if we but up here. moved up ahead, now this is Carrera, bred by Bigger. And this has got huge heads, absolutely <sighs> super fragrant. 
and then you'll notice that on the very uh, lower petals, they're a little bit got a little bit of a pink tinge. A blush, and it's absolutely beautiful. It is really beautiful. This is another beautiful, beautiful bush. Looks like a big head of cabbage but almost. Now, if you would pick this in that marshmallow stage and put it in that vase, and then woke up the next morning, it would be heaven to smell, and it'd be just just beautiful. Just oh, what a way beautiful. to wake up. It is. It's so, just beautiful. I'm seeing a few ants. Everyone asks, oh, always has the question about what the relationship between ants and ants is. And they did. Is. They did. I did have that question this year. Oh, don't mm -hmm. ants help open up the flower? <laughs> no. So the ants, when they have this bud, this little bud, sometimes they have, um, it oozes out some nectar. sap, some little uh -huh. nectar. And that's what the ants go for. They're harvesting. And they're, yeah, they are. So it, yeah. the ants do not help this flower open, not at all. But is people the, believe that. Is this the marshmallow stage right there? So this, right. So this here would be sort of the marshmallow stage. This one, um, maybe a little past, but between these two, this is marshmallow. Mm. This is when you want to pick them. Good to know. You know, and you really don't want to make them too tight. You get to know. The more you pick and the more you put into your refrigerator, mm -hmm. you start knowing which ones at what stage. Cause trust me, I have a lot of friends that do a lot of this. <laughs> and they know exactly which ones want to be a little tighter or not so tight. Right, I bet. Well, it takes practice. Chris, yeah. this has been an amazing tour. I wish I could come every day during peony season and hosta season, which is all year, basically. Well, peonies change. <laughs> every day, every day. It is so fun when you see these peonies and they're in their bud stage. Yeah. And then they start opening up, and every day is a new treasure. It's just a thrill. And it all depends on the weather, okay? It depends how much cold, how much sun. So every day is different, and every, every year is different. different. Every year is different. There are no two <laughs> years the same. Thanks for the awesome tour. Yeah, well, thanks for coming. It's great to see you again. Thank you. <laughs> Come back. <laughs>